we now turn to a discussion of monopoly. And the first difference, the difference which leads to all other differences between a monopolist and a competitive firm is that the monopolist sees a downward sloping demand curve, perceives the demand curve to be downward sloping. As you know, the competitive firm perceives the demand curve to be horizontal. Demand is always equal to average revenue. That's something we discussed before, and the reason is that, uh, for example, if your quantity is 20 and price is 3, then total revenue would be 60, and average revenue would be 60 divided by 20, because it's 20 bushels of corn. So that's 3, which of course is exactly P, and so that's exactly the demand curve. So the demand curve is always equal to average revenue. That was true in competition. It's also true in monopoly. If average revenue is falling, then marginal revenue is below it. Uh, let me erase a couple of these lines. So now marginal revenue doesn't necessarily have to be falling. So it could be rising or have weird shapes. But marginal revenue has to stay below average revenue. Again, the reason is average is falling, so marginal is below it. That's a fundamental mathematical property of averages and marginals, which we discussed quite a while ago. Usually, I'll draw a marginal revenue curve in a simple kind of way. For example, here's demand and average revenue, and here's marginal revenue. But it could look pretty weird. The two decision-making rules for the firm are exactly the same as for a competitive firm. Namely, you set a price or, let's just say, marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. With a competition, it would have been okay to say price equals marginal cost, but that's not true with monopoly. With monopoly, we need to say marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Saying that is also true for competition. And then you need to check the shutdown rule. And the shutdown rule is exactly the same for monopoly as it was for competition. So basically, you're checking, you're comparing price which is always equal to average revenue, you're comparing price versus average variable cost. And if price is bigger than average variable cost, you pr produce. If price is less than average variable cost, you shut down. Th this is always a shutdown rule. In the long run, average variable cost is just average cost, because in the long run, all the costs are variable. But that doesn't mean that we have to have a different rule. I think it's the same rule, and you can just remember that average variable cost is equal to all costs when you happen to be in the long run. So let's see how this works. I'm going to take the second diagram I drew and put in a marginal cost curve. And then applying the first rule here, that marginal revenue equals marginal cost, we had had this is the point where MR equals MC, and this determines quantity for the monopolist. I'll say Q star. It does not determine price. Uh, it determines price indirectly, but the point is not the... You, you, you don't do the following. So what I'm going to do right now is wrong. You don't do this. You don't say here is the monopoly price. That's wrong. It isn't. So I'm going to delete that. The way to find the monopoly price is the follows. This is follows. You know the quantity, Q star. The quantity has to clear the market. The monopolist has to get rid of the stuff. He has to sell it. So given Q star, it's the demand curve that determines the price. In other words, it's the consumers that determine the price once the monopolist has decided Q star. And if the monopolist determined both price and quantity, he would set uh, quantity equal to infinity and price equal to infinity. 
but he doesn't. He, he, he determines quantity. He's the producer, so he determines how much gets produced. But given that, it's up to consumers whether or not to buy it or not. And therefore, it's the consumers that determine the price. Now, the monopolist, unlike the competitive firm, the monopolist knows what the consumers are going to do. And so he takes their actions into account. He, he takes their reaction into account when he figures out what Q is going to be. But at this stage, once we have Q star, we go to the demand curve, which is determined by consumers, to find out what the equilibrium price is. So it's up here. And it's important to remember this diagram because this is the canonical, typical diagram for a monopolist. You set MR equals M MC, and then and that determines quantity. Let's write that down. Uh, determines. Let me say tentative quantity. And then to determine price, you use the demand curve. Now, when I say tentative quantity, that's because you have to check the shutdown rule, which we haven't done yet. So we don't really know that P star and Q star are actually what's going to happen in the market. Maybe the guy's going to decide to shut down. To check the shutdown rule, we have to compare price to average variable cost. Now, we know price, or at least we know the tentative price corresponding to the tentative quantity. It's P star. So I have to draw an average variable cost curve in here some place in order to determine what um, whether the shutdown rule be, would be satisfied or not. Suppose I drew suppose I drew average variable cost here. Then price would be bigger than average variable cost. Price would be here, average variable cost here. And so price is bigger than average variable cost. And therefore, the shutdown rule would be satisfied. Price is bigger than average variable cost, so the firm doesn't want to shut down. So P star and Q star would be actually what happens in the market. Let me draw another example. Average revenue. Margin revenue, P, Q, Q, marginal cost. So we've got the tentative Q here. I want to draw an example of the firm shutting down. So I have margin revenue equal to marginal cost. That gave me Q star. Going up to the demand curve, run over, gave me P star. Now I want to draw in an average variable cost curve so that the firm fails the shutdown rule and so that he actually doesn't go to P star Q star. He actually goes to Q equals zero. The way to do that is to make sure that price is below average variable cost. So if I draw the average variable cost curve up here, this example is going to fail the shutdown rule because the price is here and the average variable cost is here, and so price is below average variable cost. So this example fails the shutdown rule, and the firm won't produce a Q star. The firm will shut down. So being a monopolist doesn't guarantee you that everything's always going to be OK. Sometimes the market situation is such that demand just isn't high enough and the firm wants to shut down, the monopolist wants to shut down. One final introductory thing I want to include in this video is since profit is total revenue minus total cost, if I divide everything by Q, I get that average profit is average revenue minus average total cost. I can also now multiply by Q. You'll see, you'll see why I want to do this in a minute.
because the left hand side is just profit again but now the right hand side can be expressed geometrically average revenue and average total cost can, can can be read off the vertical axis and Q can be read off the horizontal axis so let me show you an example of how to how to sketch how to determine where total profit is demand and average revenue margin revenue margin cost let's say i have well here the quantity that the monopolist picks and the price that the monopolist picks. So here I'm going to choose to denote it not by Q star and P star but by QM and PM where M stands for monopoly. Suppose I've got this is an average variable cost curve and this is an average total cost curve. So I'm in the short run where variable cost isn't the same as total cost. And I want to illustrate this formula. So to illustrate the formula, to draw the profit rectangle, the height of the profit rectangle is going to be average revenue minus average total cost, right there. To do that, okay, average revenue is the demand curve, so it's here. And average total cost, lost the label. Average total cost is here. Okay, these are both at QM because QM is where the firm is going to produce. Oh, I didn't check the shutdown rule, but let me do that really quickly. Compare price to average variable cost. Price is here. Average variable cost is here. So price is bigger than average variable cost, so you've passed the shutdown rule. Everything's okay. You will be producing at QM. All right. So I identified average revenue. Average revenue is here. And I've identified average total cost. Average total cost is here. What I need is the difference between those two because this is saying take average revenue and subtract average total cost from it. Okay, the difference between these two is this height. And then the the mathematics says the algebra says multiply by Q. And the Q they're talking about is the monopoly quantity. It's the amount of production, which is this. Geometrically, I'll draw that here. Or here. That's Q. The profit then geometrically is this rectangle that has a height of AR minus, minus ATC and a width of QM. In other words, this rectangle shows the amount of profit. And we'll be drawing profit rectangles like this other times when we discuss the monopolist. So again, let me remind you what the important um, result is. It's that profit is this. It's average revenue minus average total cost times quantity where average revenue minus average total cost is going to be the height of a rectangle and where quantity is going to be the width of a rectangle. Okay, 
So we'll talk more about different examples of monopoly in the next video.